Hey everybody, uh, we're doing another screencast about World War I and this part is uh, going to be a multi-part series. Uh, it goes over American involvement and how it uh, grew over time. We're also calling it Over There, which was the theme of America's entry into World War I. So in 1914, America is very split over World War I. Uh, we are officially neutral, which means we are not taking sides, but that's not really quite the case. Um, the nation is split because we have a strong heritage with the English. Uh, we speak their language. Our system of government is very much founded upon what they did with the Glorious Revolution. Even though we fought a rebellion against them, time has healed all the wounds, and America and, the, and England are very close, uh, the United Kingdom. When I say England, I mean the United Kingdom. Uh, we also have very close ties to France. France was our ally in our War of Independence. They gifted us with the Statue of Liberty, which is a symbol of our nation, uh, uh, how it's welcoming to people, and it's one of the better symbols of our nation, if you ask me. Uh, so we have very strong ties to uh, both England and France. However, we have very strong ties to Germany. Uh, Germany, German was by one vote not made the language of the United States for its official communications. At the end of the revolution, hostility toward England was very strong, and the idea of some was to break ties totally, and we had a large amount of German people, or German ethnicity, in states like New York, Pennsylvania, um, Maryland. They were very strong enclaves of Germanic people who had come to America since the 17th century and were a large part of American way of life. So there was that split. Uh, the other aspect was that a large part of our uh, country in the cities were Germanic. Uh, cities like Milwaukee, Chicago, Cincinnati, St. Louis, all had very high population of German citizens who were very much engaged in America by this time. Another large part of our population, especially in the Northeast part, which was the most prosperous and populated part of the country, in cities such as Boston, Philadelphia, and New York, were Irish. And the Irish immigrants despised England and the United Kingdom. And for good reason. Uh, they had been occupied by England, who they viewed as a foreign country, since the 15th century. And the occupation had not been kind in many times. It was very repressive. There had been numerous um, attempts for self-government of Ireland, and they'd each been put down harshly by the British. So 500 years of resentment toward uh, the United Kingdom, and then coming to America, the Irish population did not really want to be involved uh, fighting for or with the British. The United States, though, are trading. They continue to trade with the Allies, and they don't really trade that much with Germany. Now, we're not trading so much military hardware, or hardware, although some is getting through, but we are trading a lot of foodstuffs, medical supplies, other finished products that England needs so they can concentrate, England and France, so they can concentrate on the war effort. This is aiding the English and British in time of war, according to the Germans, and that is certainly a reasonable conclusion. And they say to America, you got to stop because you say you're neutral. If you're not trading with us, you can't trade with them. America keeps trading. They're making a lot of money in this trade. And so German U-boats start sinking American ships or British ships that are carrying goods from the United States and France. So submarine warfare leads to a hostility toward Germany and the sink of the Lusitania, which was a passenger ship. It wasn't really uh, a ship used to haul military goods or troops or even trade supplies, although some goods it was known were being smuggled and a lot of them were munitions to England and on these types of boats. This was a passenger ship and it was sunk and American citizens were on the ship and they died as part of the sinking. And this became very much like the cry, remember the Maine, which had launched America into the Spanish-American War. Uh, and it, pop, it makes popular the anti-German sentiment. But the thing that pushes America off the edge, and I'm going to show you a picture here of Roosevelt, and all these things in the trash can are German replies to America concerns about Germany sinking United States boats, about trying to blockade England and not letting us trade with countries. But then again, we're not trading with Germany. But And you can see his expression, he's just angry. And Uncle Sam, the United States citizens, are looking over the shoulder of Wilson saying, what are you going to do about this? You know, we can't tolerate this. 
The Zimmerman affair is what pushes America into the war. This is basically a plan, a communication by Germany to Mexico. And they're saying to Mexico, listen, we know you got a raw deal from the United States in the Mexican War. And they took a lot of territories in Texas, in New Mexico, in Arizona, in California, in all this area that was once under Mexican control, not Spanish control, Mexican control in 1824. German says to them, if you back our play in Europe and send troops and declare war on England and France, we will assist you in getting your land back from the United States after the war is over. Now, America is not yet in the war, but Germany is speaking with a foreign power that's a neighbor of the United States about becoming involved in the Western Hemisphere and going after the United States. The British intercept this communication and they share it with the Americans. And this pushes Wilson over the edge. And he says, I'm going to Congress to declare war on Germany. Wilson approaches the war not to gain territory and not to really become involved in, in Europe, but he wants to make it as a war to end all wars and make the world safe for democracy. So America is intervening. We talked a lot about this earlier. Is it justifiable to intervene in a war to end it and establish peace? And that's what Wilson says is the goal. So that's how America gets involved, because in April 1917, the United States enters this war. And this is the first time that they're really engaging with the major powers. The United States is now a major world power. And the rest of Europe has been drained by this long war that's going on. It's it's entering into its third year. It's it's been involved now for it's going into three its third full year of engagement. The United States doesn't have an army. It's going to take them a while to build an army, but they have huge industrial pools and a mass that once war is declared, that neutrality, that anti-war sentiment, it shifts, and America is overwhelmingly are prepared and in support of going to combat against Germany. We'll continue with this in a little bit. Thanks for listening and have a great day.